Talking about water in geography is not really a very difficult thing to talk about, so we're just going to get straight into it. This is a brief starter. You can take time to do it if you want to, but I don't really think it's worth the risk. So what are the uses of water? Water, are, water is used in three different ways, agriculture, industrial, and domestic. We're going to explore all of these later on. In industrial and agriculture areas, water is commonly used for more economic reasons, such as cattle or in factories. This shows how in industries they may use it to turn it to steam, to turn the turbines to make energy or electricity, or how they may use it to cool down some of their machinery and, and stuff of the sort. In MEDCs, water use is more concentrated in industry and domestic areas, where in LEDCs is more commonly used in agriculture and farming. Such as in farming and agriculture, you could say irrigation and things of the like. So with this, you could argue that LEDCs are more likely to use water for subsistence and to help themselves rather than to build the economy or other such reasons like in MEDCs. However, in domestic areas, water is used to cook and clean and to preserve your health. In fact, 20% of total water consumption worldwide is industrial, meaning 70% is agricultural and 10% is domestic. However, the use of water indoors is often overlooked in LEDCs for the sake of food at factories. This is because LEDCs often tend to have food shortages, so they're more likely to use their water to make food and to feed themselves rather than for home use and stuff of the sort. Honestly, you're more likely to concentrate their water for irrigation reasons, and then the domestic versions of the water is like more of an afterthought, which is likely why you will see them going to rivers and things to get their water. This is a little diagram showing the divide in water use between developed countries and developing countries. As you can see, in the developed country, 69% is often for industry, while 30 is for agriculture, and only 11 for domestics. However, in developing countries, 82% is agricultural, 10% is industrial, and 8% is domestic. This just proves my point that developing countries tend to use more water when it comes to agriculture and farming than it does for anything else. This is another example. For exa As you can see, in it, an LEDC like Bangladesh, 96.1% of their water is used for agriculture. Meanwhile, in an MEDC like the UK, 75.4% is for industry. So you could just take a good look at it. Water is stored in many different places. Surface water simply refers to any water store that is on the surface of the earth, such as dams and reservoirs and irrigation projects. However, there are other sources of water which may not be on the surface, such as aquifers, wells, and stuff of the sort. A water supply is simply anywhere that stores water. You could even argue that a, that soil is a water store, or an, aquif an aquifer and stuff of the sort. Desalination and sewage management are both methods of water supply and types of water supply, as it de fully depends on the context. Desalination is the process of turning salt water into clean and drinkable water. So it is both a way to it is both a water supply and it's a way to get water to be clean and potable. And sewage management is collecting, purifying, and treating sewage water so that it can become usable and clean again. The same way that desalination can also be argued to be a, a way of getting water, it can also be a way to store water. This is a brief activity. The It does not take long to answer. So, the United Nations Fund is a... Children's Fund is a United Nations program which provides assistance to children and mothers in developing countries. So 6.1 describes how UNICEF classifies water supplies. Use information in, from Table 6.1. Improved water sources. You can read all of that. If the world population is 7.6 billion, calculate how many people in the world drink surface water. So the surface water is 2%. So you just have to find 2% of 7.6 billion. And the answer is 152 million. Now we're going to talk about water scarcity. 
Water scarcity is a state of lacking sufficient water to sustain the entire population comfortably. It is common in LEDCs and is affected by a range of different factors. We will list the causes, effects, and possible solutions. This is just a preface to say that the, there are many different definitions when it comes to water scarcity. When, when it's water deficit, it means there is more water being consumed than it can be produced, while water scarcity means a lack of water to sustain the whole population. This is common in places that are, have extreme climate and stuff of the sort. You could look in the workbook for more information. Here are a few causes of water scarcity. Some of these come from IGCSE sources on the internet, some of them come from the workbook, and some of them I came up with myself. Population growth is very common when it comes to water scarcity in the sense that as more and more people are born into the world, more water will be demanded, and this will cause a strain, especially if it's an LEDC that does not have the appropriate facilities to provide this water. This especially goes hand in hand with pollution. Like for example, here in Nigeria, it is not uncommon to find heaps of dirt and trash on the land and in the water, which makes it harder to treat like the water to make it available for everyone. Worldwide development just means like abroad, there's going to be more technology and more industries, meaning that the industries or the technologies are going to need water, which makes it hard to provide for everybody. Poor sewage treatment just refers to the to the lackluster facilities when it comes to purifying sewage water. Climate change can also affect the availability of water in the sense that climate change can cause yeah, global warming, which means glaciers will melt, meaning sea levels will rise, all of that, all of that business. Trade in government is very important as corrupt, corrupt governments are unlikely to put effort into improving their water systems, which can then cause scarcity for the entire nation, especially if, especially if it's a country that struggles with with the, with getting the water and distributing it, which may then cause, which may then be exacerbated by communism, as communist governments tend to take all the resources and then hand them out to people according to their family and their and their circumstances. Which, if you think about it, if you pair that with corruption, it can it can cause very bad scarcity. Lastly, the mismanagement of water or the inequality in an, in a country can also cause water scarcity. So if water is misused, like leaving the tap on while you're not using it or flushing the toilet too many times, it can cause scarcity in the local area because people are not using it properly nor try to conserve it. And the inequality of wealth and power can also come into play as wealthier people are likely to have more access to water and because of their wealthiness, they have a tendency to misuse it, meaning the, the, the people in poverty will not have that access to that same water. Now let's talk about the effects of water scarcity. There are three kinds of effects that it comes to water scarcity. There's environmental, humanitarian, and economic. It is important to note that we're talking about the impacts. Impacts can be both good and bad, but in this case, there are really no good impacts to water scarcity. When the environment, it comes to droughts, which is self-explanatory, and eutrophication, which is when fertilizer and excess nutrients dissolve into water, into possibly precipitation, and then it and then it travels with the runoff over the surface and leaks it to water bodies, which will then cause an excess growth in foliage and algae, therefore killing the rest of the ecosystem due to the due to the blocking of sunlight and the absorption of and the absorption of oxygen. So due to eutrophication the entire ecosystem will die which is likely to cause the water to become contaminated which will not be good. It could cause water scarcity. Loss of biodiversity in the sense that if there's not enough water for irrigation and stuff of the sort, um the Vegetation might die.
crops, crops will fail and then livestock will die. In fact, another impact of water scarcity is disease due to a lot of the humanitarian impacts actually depend on environmental impacts, like I just said with famine and droughts. Another one is the fact that due to the water contamination I just mentioned, diseases can spread more easily due to the bad water, which will then not be as easily treated because there's no clean water to drink and people are likely to drink the bad one if there's nothing else to drink. Lastly, the economic impacts of water scarcity. Water is needed in agriculture and industry. Without it, no crops can be cultivated and set to industries, which will ultimately lead to the breakdown of the economy. The breakdown of the economy could then lead to less income for the government, which will make them unable to improve infrastructure, meaning the whole country will just suffer as a result of just water scarcity, which makes it seem like a bigger issue than most people think it to be. Now we're going to talk about the solutions to water scarcity. What can you do? Simply put, the easiest solutions to water scarcity are desalination and sewage treatment, which we explained earlier, and the conservation of water in domestics, such as, for example, um, turning off the tap while you brush your teeth, um, washing the toilet once, Try not washing your hands excessively. Anything you could do that will reduce the amount of water you use in your home. I would also argue the don't use too many plates because then you'll have to continually wash dishes. It's just conser- conserving the amount of water you use in your house in the sense of cutting down how much you use to only the necessities and not using it for things that don't need it. And then lastly, water charities. There are many charities and funds and organizations on the internet and abroad that tend to set out a kind of a kind of portal where you can donate money for them to generate clean water or you could even donate water you don't use. In this way, water is then redistributed and it can help solve the scarcity in many different areas. Another one I would like to add right now is irrigation systems. Um, It was mentioned earlier in the slides. The way irrigation plans work is in the sense that if it's done well, then water can be redistributed back to the land, which is likely to help get crops back and boost agriculture. The agriculture can then provide can then provide GDP for the country as well as help industries in the secondary sector. And when the economy is good, then the government can increase tax, which will then increase their income and then their infrastructure. And the more money the government gets, the more they can work towards a better system for basic things such as water. So, yeah, it's very simple things that can actually lead to it. This is one last activity. Um, I do not have the mark scheme at the moment because it's it's locked behind, it's it's locked behind a paywall. But if you want the mark scheme, you can go to Save My Exams Geography zero four six zero CIE. It will likely it will give you the answers there. So it's this and this. That's all. Thank you.